Revelation chapter 21, verse 8. Revelation chapter 21, verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and all mongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. The point is this. These sins that ought to be dealt with at the time of salvation are outward sins. And when you are saved, all these outward sins are cleared up from your life. They are forgiven. They are taken away from your life. And you are free from them. Because salvation brings the grace of God into your life and makes you to have authority and power over all these outward sins. Let me, as we have read all those references, let me point to you some of these outward sins. If these outward sins are in anyone's life, it is either he has never met the Lord or he met the Lord before, but he has gone back to his vomit. In which case, something fresh needs to be done. It's like if you have taken birth for a child. And this child, you are getting the child ready to go to school. And you cleaned up the child. And you even toweled and you did everything. And you said, go and dress up. And instead of the child going to dress up, he went to play in the mud. And as he was, as he played in the mud, enjoying himself, you come out and say, what's the matter? I thought I took bath for you now. Now what are you going to do? Are you going to still put clean dress upon the dirty body, claiming that after all, I washed the child before? No, you don't do that. You take the child back again, and you want to wash the child again. So all these outward sins that should have been taken care of at salvation, if you now find them in your life, you can't say, but I know I was saved. But I know I was born again. But I know I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. But I know I was cleansed. The point is, whatever you experienced in the past, if these outward sins are still discovered in your life, then go back and wash again. Go back and be cleansed in the blood of the Lamb. What are these outward sins? I've read some passages to you. I'm just going to summarize for you now to understand uncleanness. You are fumbling with your body so that you can derive simple, simple pleasure. You are dirty again. Fornication. Relationship between man and woman, you have not got married. It may be you are in Koshi, but you have not married. It may be you are proposing, but you have not married. It may be that you have, you know, spoken to one another, you have even spoken to the church, but you have not married. It may be you have done introduction, but you have not married fornication. Or it may even be that this is your own genius sister living with you at home. Or this may be a cousin that is living with you and you are doing this evil thing, fornication. It is a sin. And it means that even though maybe you say you are washed before, you are now dirty, you have to go back to the fountain, open for uncleanness and for unrighteousness. Another sin, adultery. You leave your husband and then you go to another man that is not your husband. Or you leave your wife, you go to another woman that is not your wife. And you have sinful pleasure. Sinful pleasure at any level. Because there are people that will say, actually, we didn't do the real thing. I don't know the real thing. If you have done evil and you have got so near as to inflame your body, as to defile yourself, as to go near doing evil, even if you say you have not done what you call the real thing, you are an adulterer. And then it says murder. These are outward sins that should not be found in the life of a person that is a child of God in connection with murder abortion. In connection with murder suicide. A person that takes his own life has committed an outward sin and he that does such a sin has taken life, he cannot get to the kingdom of God. Prostitution. You sell your body for money. Either temporarily, there could be a one-day prostitution, a one-week prostitution, one-year prostitution. There could be a partial kind of profession that is prostitution. After all, there are people who are partial traders. They work in the office, but partially they also trade. And they will say, well, really I'm not a trader. Yes, we understand, but you trade a little. And you are a trader, partially. 
There may be people who will say, well, I'm not a prostitute because I'm not in that business. I, I do my job. But then, but you know that you get promotion by giving your body. But you know that you extort money from men by giving your body. But you know that you make unlawful gain by giving your body. But you know you get contract by giving your body. Although you may not be a full-time prostitute, at least you are a partial one. Prostitution. Lying. And cursing. Do you know that there are people that do not know that cursing is one of these outward sins? Calling their children by abusive name. They'll call their children dog. What if God answered what you said and turned your child to dog? Then you begin to pray and pass and say, look at what happened to my child. That's what you call your child. We don't use abusive language. We don't use a kind of language to curse people. Abusive language is a sin. And when you get saved, all those things are cleared out of the way. Of course, blasphemy. Blasphemy is, uh, you know, blasphemy in the name of God, using the name of God in vain, using the name of Jesus Christ in vain, or swearing, calling the name of God to a lie. You know you are selling something, and you know you are telling a lie about it. This is what I bought it. Then you call the name of God to witness your lie. It is the outward sin that you should have been free away from when you became a Christian. Slander. There are people that will slander other people, cut down other people, and defame other people, and say wrong things about other people. I'm sure you know that they need to be washed. They need to be born again. Backbiting. Backbiting. You know, sometimes a person goes to the farm, and there he is, just cutting the grass and cutting this and cutting this, not knowing that there is a serpent coming from behind. And then that serpent bites from the back. And it just feels a sharp pain. He turns around, and the serpent is already going away, but he knows that poison has entered. There are people that have the nature of the serpent. And they will bite you at the back. In front of you, they will smile. They will laugh. They will say, praise the Lord. They say, you are my brother. They will say, I appreciate you. Oh, they say, we pray for you in our family every day. Never mind. At your back, they bite. And that backbiting is one of the outward sins that we should have been free from when we became Christians. Tail bearing is related to the backbiting. Tell bearing his carrying story, bad story, from days to days. Did you hear? Where have you gone? You didn't hear? You didn't know so and so and such and such? How they are carrying on? Uh, you didn't hear that so and so has packed out of um, uh, husband's house uh, and you are in this city? You didn't hear that they terminated such and such uh, so and so's appointment? You didn't hear that sister so-and-so had miscarriage. <clears throat> we don't know what they're doing in their life. We don't know their secret sin. We don't know all these people. Who knows where they're going? Who knows even whether they, are, whether they have this or they have that? Miscarriage. And didn't you know? Watch her when we get to church. Don't say I told you, but just watch her. Ah, it's a lie. She may wear maternity, guys. It's a lie. That thing has gone. Tell me any. Going from days to days to days. Are they born again? The Bible says no. Are they still retaining their experiences, the Christian experience? The Bible says no. What are they looking for? Is it sanctification they are looking for? The Bible says no. That if these outward sins are in their lives, that they do not even profess, they shouldn't profess to be saved. How about stealing? How about borrowing and not paying back again? That's what the Bible says. The Bible says the wicked... Borrow it and does not pay back again. You find a person that will say, uh, Can I have a five naira there? Can I have ten naira there? Can I have one thousand naira there? Can I have twenty thousand naira there? Can I have fifty thousand naira there? And they never think of paying back. The Bible says they are sinners. And the Bible says that such people that borrow money and they do not even plan, they do not even think of paying back, that they have this outward sin in their lives. The wicked borrow it and pay it not back again. Gambling. And the love of money. When a person is gambling and is playing lottery, now what is it? You find in the pocket of a, in the pocket of a Christian. You dip your hand in his pocket, and then something took your hand. You say, "Ah, what is this?" <laughs> Believer, you carry the the uh, top of a bottle all about Pepsi Pepsi Crown. 
What are you looking for? Ah, they said that if we, once we get the number up to this, and get the number up to this, and get the number up to this, that we're going to win something. You want to reap where you have not sold? You want to gamble? You want to do lottery? You want to be competing with the people so that I can win this, I can win this, sister so and so one motorcycle, where is she going to ride it? Sister so and so one this and one that. We Christians, we don't gamble with the people of the world. It is the love of money. And the Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they pierced themselves with many sorrows, and they drowned themselves in hopeful loss and perdition. And you, O man of God, flee this is, you run away from them. So love of money is one of these outward things, outward things that need to be cleansed and taken away when you are born again. Covetousness. And then idolatry, idol worship, and sorcery, and witchcraft. Of course, hypocrisy. How about hatred? How about malice? You know that there are people that may say they are in the choir, but the malice, I'm telling you, the malice is at its height. If that sister sees this other sister in the choir, he says, I don't know how I feel. I don't think I can stay in the choir. I don't think I can be there because since sister so-and-so is there, since brother so-and-so is there, I suspect them that they have familiar spirit. And once sister so-and-so is there, I cannot be there. You are not born again. Because if you are born again, there will be no suspicion. And there will be no malice. And you know, there are, there are different kinds of malice. There is the outright, aggressive, definite, known, manifest malice that you know so-and-so and so-and-so, they are keeping malice together. There's another kind of malice. It is called diplomatic malice. Very diplomatic. And, you know, when you are coming this way, if the man, if the woman can avoid, you know, see you face to face, he goes the other way. I never want to talk to that man. And I hope we don't meet. And I hope he doesn't have to talk to me. And then when you are coming, they look in another direction. And they do that deliberately and permanently, regularly, because of diplomatic malice. And eventually when they cannot get out of it, and you know, you come face to face to them. And then you say something, he's going to answer in a very diplomatic way. In fact, he begins to pray internally. Oh God, help me. Don't let me open up too much. Don't let me be friendly. Don't let me give myself into the hands of a deceiver. Because I know, he's praying internally. All that you are saying, and you ask him, you think he's hearing you. He's not hearing you. He's praying internally. Help me to control myself. Because I shouldn't talk to this person. He's a child of the devil. I'm a child of God. And I mustn't talk to a person like this. And when you finish all your questions, you say, uh, what's the answer you are going to give me? He didn't hear you all the time. Internally, he was praying. Internally, he was talking. Don't let me get muddled up with this fellow malice. Doesn't want to talk to a fellow brother, a fellow sister. How can we say we are saved, we are children of God, and we cannot greet people, we cannot relate normally with people. And of course, you know, these people that keep the kind of malice, they talk and talk and talk against the people they are keeping malice with. And a child of God cannot do that. If we're doing that, it simply means we're not children of God. And then quarreling. 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 You see, there are, there are people that waste a lot of time. And a lot of time they waste is that, you know, we say, ah, Brother Coordinator, what have you been doing? Oh, he says, I'm very, very busy. Very, very busy in our district. Because, you know, uh, some of our sisters, although they are wonderful, talented sisters, but they quarrel too much. And sometimes I need to sit down. And I sit down with them for two hours. And this one, in fact, while I'm sitting down with them and so trying to talk to them, this sister A will abuse sister B. And sister B will say, it's me you abuse like that, even though coordinator is there, bam, and slap her. And I begin, to, I say, ah, I'm coordinator, I am here, I am here, don't fight, don't fight, don't fight. Primary school settling. And you see, oh, those sisters in my district, I don't know what to do with them. They are wonderful sisters. In fact, they are workers. But they quarrel. They are not children of God. Children of God don't fight. Do children of God fight? Tell me out loud. Uh -huh, but some of you that are answering me now, some of you are fighting. Some of you quarrel. And, we, and they have to be certainly quarrel for you. And if and eventually when they say, okay, we will take you to pastor, we'll, eh, okay, settle it for us here. We don't want pastor to know, but God knows, but the angels know, but heaven knows that you are no more a child of God. Once fighting and quarreling has come in, 
anger, violence. You know, sometimes uh, a, a husband will just do something very simple like this, and the wife will be violent. Violent, you can't believe it. Violent, you can't believe it. Or sometimes it is the wife that uh, ordinary thing, maybe the food is late a little, or this and that, and the man can be violent. Violent, violent, I'm saying violent. The man can break the cup and break the plate and take that uh, bowl of uh, rice and say, this is the rice you gave me, and this is the kind of uh, soup you gave me. Am I a beggar? Am I a slave? Am I your boy boy? That you gave me this kind of thing. Bam, on the ground. And eventually, after about, uh, you know, 30 minutes, when the husband, wife, wife quickly went back to the kitchen and gave all the meat in the kitchen and brought everything. He was say, uh, hey. Now, at that time, it was Satan. It was Satan. If you are violent like that, that means you are a sinner. You cannot, because of food, because of meat or no meat, it means that you really have not been cleansed from your outward sin. Or it is cruelty. And you know people who are cruel. You know people who are cruel. You know sometimes, uh, uh, some of the times, I now counsel little children. They bring a child to me. And they would say that, you know, this child, want pastor to pray for the child. I say, what's the problem? Ah, they would say the child, uh, you know, just runs out of the house, does not like to sleep in the house. Then I said, I will not pray first, but how do you treat the child? Uh, when he comes back like that, this is what we do. And all I can say is that they are cruel to the child. And the child is wondering, can this one be my daddy? Can this one be my mommy? Or did, just, did, did, just, did they just bring me to this family? And because of that cruelty, the child cannot stay in that home. And if you are cruel like that, and you say, well, I'm training the child. You are training the child. There are a lot of marks on the body of the child already. And the child is saying, when I grow up, I will not go to this church with them. When I grow up, I will never stay in this place like this. When I grow up, in fact, I say, girl, if you treat that girl, that girl is going to say, I'm going to find a boy to marry in time and run out of this place. This place is too hot because of cruelty. And if we say we're children of God, all that ought to go away. Rebellion. Injustice. Retaliation. Do you know there are people like in this church, even though they say they are workers, retaliation, revenge. You threw a block at me, I'm going to throw cement at you. And then divorce. Drunkenness. Gluttony. You see, there are some Christians that will say, I'm a Christian. I'm a child of God. They don't know when their stomach is full. They will eat and eat and eat like this until their belly is inconveniencing them. If you say, it remains a little gary, can you take it? Give me. I will try. And even after they are taking that and they are drunk all day, maybe they drink Pepsi, they drink whatever they want to drink, and uh, you say, well, what are we going to do with this one now? Do we keep it or do we throw it away? And he says, uh, where is it? And then he says, what is that? Well, you have taken already, Gary, and you have taken the other things, and you cannot take this at the same time. Everything is going to the same belly. Give it to me. Gluttony. If you are a glutton, how do you say you are a Christian? You cannot control what you take in. You cannot control how you eat. Drunkenness and gluttony are relatives. They are similar. Bribery. Fraud. Dishonesty. Simple pleasure. Dancing. You see, there are people that will go to all these uh, nightclubs, or maybe you don't go to nightclub, and you have all this music in your house, and then you lock your door, and you are dancing to it. And when people open the door, when people want to come in, you stop that music, and then you say, oh, welcome to the sanctuary. Then you bring out the Deeper Life magazine, and you bring out the Bible, and you're not a hypocrite. And in decent dressing, scorning, mockery, murmuring, False witness, evil speaking, I service partiality, the unequal yoke, eating things sacrificed to idols, pride, envy, jealousy, sowing discord among the brethren. You see, all these things are pointed out to you. These are outward sins. And these outward sins, the Bible says, they should not be once named or mentioned among those of us who say that we are the children of God.